I, I, I got to do this because I promised our Patreon uh, supporters that I would ask you a few questions from them about fanboys. So you got a couple minutes to take some fanboys questions? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Well, let's start with uh, Andrew. Andrew asks, have you thought about what the guys would be up to around the sequel trilogy and how they'd react to it? Oh, yes. You know, one <laughs> thing we are trying to do is to do more stuff with fanboys. So yeah, um, that stuff we'll hopefully talk about more soon. What they would be up to, obviously, the world of fandom has it, it not just changed during the prequels um, as the as the world expanded in the late 90s and early 2000s franchises sprung up geek culture became mainstream um and now it's to the point where it's almost gotten smaller i feel like star wars has gotten it, it's not that it's old hat but it's become almost a niche thing again because it gets so specific um i don't I think what the guys would be very divided and honestly divided on it, you know. Um, I think there's people that will would see the merits of the movies. The way I look at the the, the sequel trilogy, I know there's a lot of people that now just want to auto hate it, and I think it's there's still so many great things in the sequel trilogy that I that I absolutely love. There's and there's the characters that would be, you know what, like Hutch would probably be like, you know what, man, like. Some people say the prequels ruined my childhood. He'd be like, The Last Jedi ruined my adulthood. That's probably what he would be like. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he would speak to, you know, 60% of Star Wars fans. Like, there's a lot of people that probably be like, Yeah, Hutch, I, I go Hutch, I'm a Hutch. Uh, there's a lot of people that'd be like, You know what? Star Wars needed that change. And that'd be more, maybe uh, Windows would be more analytical and, and uh, positing a theory that, like, you, you can be. Uh, reductive and subversive and and um subvert expectation without purpose just to why not just do it you know I, a lot of people i love that love last jedi they just love they don't they like chaos they don't like they like star wars like i don't like star wars anyway that movie was great because it was just like screw all that crap it's a stupid franchise you know that that's why they love it <laughs> well you you, know? you, that's who you and really like, want to impress cool. with a with, with your uh, <laughs> installment into one of the most beloved franchises in the world Let's go after the people yeah, that like don't Hutch would like, be it. like Hutch would be like the kind of guy that's like, let me get this straight. You know, Hutch is like, Han Solo is someone who like sold his medal for some booze and like <laughs> on top of booze her dad and an estranged husband, like who referred to being a scoundrel and a s swindling his way through life, like only get killed by his own son. Like he'd be pissed, <laughs> you know? You know they they, they could have pissed. just they could have just Hutch decided would be yeah all right I I don't want I should be like you took the week. greatest hero of like the galactic civil war and he he became a coward off screen and he <laughs> ran away and then he did it to the other coolest character he'd probably be pretty pissed so would he be um, driving be an Avengers mobile uh, no way no, uh, no he'd still be he'd still be a Star Wars fan like I think Hell you yeah, can you be. can be critical and be a Star Wars fan. Um, and like I, I, I'm critical of Last Jedi. I still, there's parts of the movie I really love. There's, there's, yeah, I like I the mean, end. To like all, to like the the sequel trilogy, you know, you have to say there are certain things in it that are they are what they are. So I've I've just grown to accept it. Um, not going to change. All right, it. next question. Complaining about it's not going to change anything. So That's I true. think there's just characters that are gonna, um, they're gonna see different things in it, the merits, and that would be a point of contention, but it wouldn't diminish their their fandom. All right, here's a question from Jeff, who says, Was it always your intention for Seth Rogen to play three different roles in Fanboys, or was it just a spur-of-the-moment thing? Um, when I first started talking to Seth about it, um, the idea came up uh, in a Peter Sellers, uh, Doctor Strangelove kind of way just having somebody play multiple characters. So just to get him in the movie more because he really wanted to be a part of it and he's hysterical. So um, it wasn't written in the script to say, you know, this will be played by the same person. Uh, it wasn't like we were hiring somebody to play all three. Um, the two of them were definitely intended and then uh, having fun with him be the, um, the, um, 
Klingon-esque door guard was a bonus third. No, oh, bonus. Um, Eric from Phoenix asks, how hard was it to get Lucasfilm on board to support the movie? Um, it was, it was a process. Uh, we didn't go to them too early. They became aware of the project. We um, presented to them the the script and what our plans were and what we needed of them. And um, I think that process, they saw that uh, we were passionate and we were genuinely fans and we never wanted to do anything to malign Star Wars. And ultimately George um, had a conversation with one of our producers and gave him the blessing to do so provided that uh, the movie always remained in a place where it wasn't disparaging towards um, his creation. I mean, poking fun is one thing, but um, uh, slandering or criticizing well, it at, at the expense mm -hmm. is something else. So yeah. we, we, He's been, he's we been such that. a fan of parody. I mean, uh, George has yeah. sought out parody. Uh, if you, you so know, we honored like that. Guy. Yeah. But then George, um, when the movie was being re-edited, George did weigh in a little bit and um, we reflected to Harvey Weinstein that um, he backed uh, my version of the movie, which was not the version that was trying to um, throw fans under the bus a little bit and make fun of them as wow. opposed to poke fun. So uh, he also stayed, uh, remained steadfast with the PG-13 rating. Um, hmm. when, you know, our studio was trying to, um, turn it into more of a raunchy R, um, to capture a different audience. Uh, so he, he was like, nope, never going to happen. PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, this, this fascinating. I, this, this I question do George injected himself into the actual process of choosing which edit would be the one that got the green line it wasn't that it's so he, cool. he did just say you can't change the rating and mm -hmm. the the tone of what we had shown uh and made was in line with what um we had uh scripted and promised whereas the other material was not so i don't know what the exact conversation was but i know reflected through Weinstein company was that um, he was supportive of um, an earlier version. Yeah, hey, uh, here's you know, you guys did respect George Lucas and to me fanboys always felt like a love letter to Star Wars, but uh, you didn't hold back on a tech on attacking the old Trek and uh, everything from the con statue to uh, uh, the, the battle between the uh, Starwoids and the uh, Trekkies, it was uh, it was hilarious. And Tony was wondering uh, if you still think that there is that strong divide in fandom these days between the Trekkers and the Star Wars fans. So a couple things. Um, first of all, um, regarding Trek, I am a Trek fan. Um, we had an agreement or in, in a verbal thing with Viacom that was um, to use Trek on screen and we had these costumes and everything and it was going to be a fun Trek thing. And then um, about nine days before the movie, we were supposed to shoot that, they, they pulled out and reneged on all that stuff, Viacom, the whores at Viacom. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> thus, the rewriting uh, to savage them because they really screwed us. Um, and you know Seth had a lot of fun with that and wanted to go further with it and so Star Trek got that uh, end of the stick because um, the, the parent company uh, didn't want to have fun and they kind of uh, screwed us or reneged. so um, they got what was due but look Khan has a giant member running down his thigh which, <laughs> which is sculpted there in bronze <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, C. Schultz um, even kisses him on the lips. Uh, That's so right. <laughs> it, there, there, it, Star Trek became like you know the the adversarial thing for the sake of that narrative. Um, the rivalry, I think, is it's been neutered by the fact that there's just so much more now. Um, yes, yeah. right, right. They're so not the more. only two at the party. Yeah, exactly. It was used to be, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek, 
Farscape, Babylon 5, and maybe <laughs> oh, like Stargate. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this, then there's Those a couple are like charity throw ins like, there. <laughs> Space 1999. They're like, oh, that's a great show. You're like, get out of here. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's a different time. There's obviously, yes. you look at what's on television now, and you've got like a new Marvel show every month, and you've got like in- incredible IP being, um, brought to the big screen at the highest possible quality and then you see what Star Trek's doing and it's it's not even like I don't know I tried watching one of those new shows it's hard um, they're so dropping F-bombs in Star Trek now is I mean, that that's like a thing. Thing. I got through most of the first season and I just wasn't compelled to keep going it wasn't awful it just wasn't compelling and um, I, I don't know what else is I don't know what they're doing on the cinematic level I just feel like it's been um, left behind so I don't think there's that rivalry but you know what the other day like I was in Canada for a while and the best thing about Canada is they have a channel that just plays Star Trek uh, wow. I don't know what else they have up there in Canada <laughs> but there's this channel and all the time I'd be in my, my crummy hotel and every day it'd be like Mondays are OT Trek, you know, original Trek, and Tuesdays are Next Generation, and there was wow. Deep Space Wednesdays, wow. and so that's all I would watch it, <laughs> and I loved it. Um, and I was like, "Where's that channel here?" I could lose um, myself for months uh, if that if that was on here. You'd find me months. I later. know it was great, but there's just there's nothing like that like happening with Trek right now. It's all no. it's the old stuff uh, that's really the the torchbearer so um i don't feel like it's kept up with um star wars in a viable or relevant way but i have a strong affinity for the old yeah. stuff and um it doesn't diminish the quality well, it's hitting 55 years star trek all the stuff wouldn't exist i mean star star trek was like the first great you know after twilight Zone, the first great like episodic um you know sci-fi fantasy thing on, on television that had like um really captured imagination the way it did so it everybody owes something to star trek and they always will well that's that, those are nice sentiments um but i still say get off our land <laughs> trekkers <laughs> all, right. all right i don't always i always that. keep I, it I, honest i am a, I am a star trek fan honest too. opinions jimmy <laughs> you know, when it comes to Star Wars, I look, Star I always fan. say yeah. honest, Jimmy. You know, I, and and some people are like, "Well, you're very critical of this movie or that movie." And since I've been coming on your show, how long has it been now? Like 14, 15 years. <laughs> a long yeah. time. Yeah. I have always kept it honest, whether it's reviewing Clone Wars episodes, and I am this friends with the people that make this stuff. And I and I'll, I'll say this wasn't my favorite episode, or this was what was what mm-hmm. I would have done differently. Or the, and that's I, I don't normally talk about movies in that way. Because I know how hard it is to make a movie and the passion and commitment mm. and effort it takes to make one. But I was a Star Wars fan, fan before I was a professional filmmaker. And I, I talk about mm-hmm. it in a honest, real, and constructive way. That's what I try to do. Well, that's so, why we love talking um, to guys like you. We love talking to FJ because you bring a very unique perspective. Because you haven't lost your fandom uh, and yet you, you you work in the industry that, that that created the thing that inspired your fandom and it's a very unique place to be and it's a it creates a very unique perspective so it's always it's very always fortunate. good to hear and FJ I loved hearing FJ on your show and he was um, keeps it colorful and, and and real as well and um, you know it's never to hurt anyone's feelings if you like something great if I don't like what you like great I'm not offended you know we're just talking about it there's a difference between being critical and being cruel and there's no there's there's certainly no intent to be cruel Uh, i'll still take bad star wars over good just about anything else and um that's a relative term um but uh but uh, but what it does do is is just like if you've got you know people around that are uh, fans of a particular sports team things get heated you start saying you know a few drinks later or whatever and you know you're saying all kinds of crazy things that's just the way it is and 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 this kind of passion is no different and in the people that want to sort of bottle it and put you know uh, gates around it and 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 um safeguard it from little hurt feelings it just go go somewhere else 
go somewhere else. That's not what fandom. That's just right. not what fandom is. Fandom no. is like it's healthy discussion and and debate, and yes. you're allowed to talk about what you respond to. And that's what's great about it. Everyone can find something different. Everyone can enter into that discussion, find something they respond to and like it and adhere to it and manifest it and get tattoos of it. And only by those <laughs> characters, you can do whatever you want. It's customizable to you. And there isn't one thing where you, you have to like these things in order to maintain your status as a fan in this. If you don't like it, you don't like it. And that's totally okay. I mean, my goal is to try and find a way to um, wrap my head around everything to understand it. I just want to be a fan. I want to be like a historian of it. I want to understand it. I want to mm. uh, be able to talk about it in um, an intellectual way beyond just a reactive way.